Okay, so I've got the main component here for this build. This is a 10 inch hub motor that has a 10 inch tire on it. There will be a lot of testing that goes on before I even put this into the open wheel. So I'm gonna build a test fixture that slides onto the axle here and will hold it in midair and allow this wheel to spin as I do all of the testing. With this hub motor attached inside the fixture, I don't have to worry about it spinning out of control when I do my testing. The wires coming out of this motor came terminated with some ring terminals as well as this connector. These connectors aren't compatible with the other components in the system, so I'm going to go ahead and chop these off and solder on some bullet connectors. And for the Hall Effect sensor, I'm going to terminate it with a JST PH connector. I didn't mention this at the beginning, but this is not a regular DC motor that you might be used to. This is actually a brushless DC motor with a Hall Effect sensor to give back positional data. What that means is that I need another component called an electronic speed controller or ESC to connect up to this motor to get it to spin. This is the ESC that I'm going to be using for this project. It's called the VESC or VESC, named after its creator, Benjamin Vetter. This ESC is way more expensive than your average e-bike or e-scooter electronic speed controller. It has a microcontroller along with a USB port built in. This means that you can connect it up to your computer and use the software to configure all sorts of cool features. When I started this project, I fully expected to have to use an Arduino microcontroller and write a whole bunch of code to do the balancing part, but this ESC makes it possible to configure all of that in the software. To me, that alone is worth the extra cost of this ESC, and it's the biggest reason I'm using it in this project. I'm gonna have to do the same treatment to this as I did the motor. I'll install some bullet connectors on one side, as well as an XT60 connector on the other side for the battery.
It's time to talk about the sponsor of this video. Altium Designer is a CAD solution for PCB designers and engineers. One of the coolest features of Altium Designer is the cloud workspace. As I've mentioned before, I use this feature to take my laptop on the go to continue to work on projects that I started on my desktop. But that's only scratching the surface of the cloud features. Using Altium 365 is really simple. All you need to do is log into your workspace right here in the upper right hand corner. Then when you go to open a project, just select your cloud workspace and all of your projects will be visible. I've had several experiences where I was doing design reviews in a professional setting and I needed to get all of the design files to various people on the team. You can imagine how cumbersome it was to make sure that each person that needed to see it had the most up-to-date version of the design. The cloud features in Altium 365 make this whole process so much easier. With version control built right in, you can always ensure that everybody has the latest design. These cloud features are awesome for design reviews, but they're also useful for things like collaborating with team members or with clients or maybe sending information to a manufacturing facility. If you're ready to take your PCB design to the next level, I would highly recommend checking out Altium Designer. I will have a link in the description where you can download a free Trial. The next thing I want to do is connect the VESC speed controller up to this motor to see if I can get it to spin up. I haven't settled on the type of battery I'm going to use, so for this bench test, I'm going to use this 48 volt 10 amp power supply to supply the voltage to the motor. I've gone ahead and put an XT60 connector on this so that I can mate with the VESC speed controller. So here you can see the VESC tool, which is the software used to configure the VESC speed controller. This software is documented really well. There's a lot of tutorials online on how to set it up and how to get your motor up and running. I don't plan on going into detail here, but I'm just gonna do the bare minimum to get the motor up and running. The very first thing that I need to do is open the connection to the VESC speed controller. From there, I can set the motor settings as well as the app settings. In the motor settings tab, you'll set what kind of motor you're gonna be using. I'm using a brushless DC with Hall effect sensors, and I'm going to be using the field oriented control or FOC profile. I'm gonna set my current limits to 40 amps here, as well as my battery voltage cutoff. On the FOC menu, I'm going to run through some of these tests that automatically detect some of the measurements of the motor, and it sets the best values in those parameters for me. This is very straightforward. And as you can see, as it told me, the motor starts to spin slowly as it takes some of these measurements and fills in these parameters. From there, I can turn on the real-time data streaming and watch the motor parameters perform in real-time. Now that I've got the motor up and running, it's time to connect the IMU, the Inertial Measurement Unit. The IMU is the little module that has an accelerometer, a gyroscope, and often other sensors to detect different angles. I need to attach one of those JST connectors onto it to allow me to interface with the VESC speed controller. Then I can use the app to configure that IMU.
I've set all of the parameters in the configuration tool for the IMU and I've secured it here to the speed controller. So now when I tilt the speed controller, the motor spins proportional to how much I'm tilting it. On the actual one wheel, there are some foot pads built in as an extra safety feature. This safety feature prevents the wheel from spinning up until the rider has their full foot on the board. I've done the same thing here with a couple of these force sensitive resistors. I can go ahead and tilt the IMU and the wheel does not spin because I don't have my foot pressed on these foot pads. I can activate the foot pads by pressing on them and now when I tilt the IMU, the motor spins up. I've gone as far as I can go without actually building the frame and assembling the whole thing because the next step is to tune all of the motor parameters and make it easy to balance. So that's exactly what I'm going to do in part two of this series. I'm going to design the frame and 3D print some enclosures and then I'm going to assemble the whole thing into a self-balancing skateboard. You want to be sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss out on that next video. You should also consider becoming a bite-sized supporting member either through Patreon or YouTube memberships. Supporting members get access to things like behind-the-scenes content, early video releases, and monthly video hangouts.